Hello, everyone. Welcome to the OWASP conference. My name is Svetlana Samko. I am a volunteer in the OWASP community, Agile Technical Project Manager in Verizon Connect, Developer Advocate, Mentor for Women in Tech, and Web Development Mentor with a passion for security, data science, and AI. And I will be moderating this session. During the next uh, 30 minutes, we will uh, divide the session in two parts, like 30, uh, 25 minutes for the session and five minutes for questions. Uh, the session is about OWASP DSOMM project by Timo Pagel. And please uh, submit your questions uh, you have during the session and Q&A uh, uh, tab. Just it's on the right side uh, of this video in the Whoa platform. Uh, please do not submit in Zoom because it will not allow you to submit in Zoom. But in Whoa platform, please uh, be free to ask questions. Um, and Timo will answer in the last five minutes. Uh, any questions you will submit. Uh, let me introduce Timo. Timo has been in IT industry for over 20 years. Uh, after a career as a system administrator and web developer, he advises customers as a DevSecOps consultant and trainer. The focus is on security, test automation for software and infrastructure and evaluation of complex applications in the cloud. In his spare time, he teaches web and application security at various technical colleges. Welcome, Timo. We are happy to see you here. And please, over to you. Thank you for the nice introduction. Let me share my screen. Yeah, so uh, today we will talk about uh, measuring uh, your security maturity uh, in your team or your organization, depending uh, on your role. And uh, tool for that is the OWASP DevSecOps maturity model. I will start with some slides, uh, but then we will quickly go to the application itself and analyze uh, how the model is uh, uh, presented in that application, how it can make use of the application around it. Uh, quick words uh, about me, I'm a DevSecOps consultant um, and I love open source projects like the Juice Shop, like the DevSecOps maturity model, like the Overs security pins projects um, or Defect Dojo and many others and I, I contribute to them. So what is the target of maturity models in general? Brian Glass uh, uh, presented a definition which I have slightly adjusted here, uh, but, but the base is from Brian. Uh, so uh, the target of maturity models is to analyze current software security practices, build a security program in defined iterations, show progressive improvements in secure practices and define and measure security related activities. So here is story uh, of what I what I did. I created a plan for the um, for the tests uh, for a company, and we we wanted to uh, uh, introduce these tests over a time range of one or two years. Uh, from that, we uh, have done so far only one third. So that's why it's important to do it in small iterations, continuous improve because it doesn't make sense from what I have recognized to make a big plan in the start. All right. So as we know now the definition of maturity models, um, uh, I would like uh, that you fill out the pull, uh, the, the pull in the uh, app so that we can figure out how many of you are fully aware of your DevSecOps maturity, how many of you are partially aware and who is not aware. Uh, you will find uh, the poll in the uh, Uwa app uh, on the on the right. Please fill it out. Um, what I mean by area of influence is because you, it, depending on your role, your area of influence might be your team or the whole organization or as an architect, often some teams um, or as a product owner, often you have multiple teams. So that's why I say area of influence. So in your area of influence, um, are you fully aware of the DevSecOps maturity? Do you have the insights or are you partially aware or are you not aware? 
so far we have answers which are all uh, partially aware. Right. So that means that you do have some insights, but uh, not uh, not the whole coverage. That is that is a good start because it means you will uh, be able to quickly fill out the DevSecOps maturity model to gain even more insights. I will show you in this talk how how to do that. Beforehand, we need to uh, get to know a bit um, the DevSecOps maturity in gen the maturity model in general. Uh, so we have these DevOps dimensions. Uh, then we have subdimensions for these different dimensions. And in the uh, subdimensions, you have multiple levels, four levels. Uh, it starts with maturity one. Um, and as higher the maturity goes, as higher is uh, the, the, the effort of implementation of these activities or as less uh, security benefit in, is in there. Maybe you have other benefits from certain uh, activities uh, which are not in the area of security, but we focus obviously on security in the model. These are the different uh, dimensions, uh, build and deployment, culture and organization, information gathering, hardening, and test and verification. As I said, we have uh, four maturity levels um, and level one means uh, that you have a basic understanding of security. Level two means that you have an adoption of basic security practices. Level three means uh, that you have a high adoption of security practices. And level four means that you have advanced uh, deployment uh, of security practices at scale. So that, that are, that are uh, uh, words here. Uh, mainly it's level one, uh, you you have a little security and uh, level four means you have a very, very high uh, uh, security level reached. Uh, you might ask, why are there some spots white? So these white spots come because uh, the model is created in a way uh, where it makes sense to have activities. So when it doesn't make sense to have here in application tests, for example, um, um, activities at level one, because you first have to do other activities at level one. And so you can start with level two, that's why it's white. So there is nothing uh, which makes sense at level two, that's why it's white. Some other maturity models are, are, are created in a way that they are very structured. They wouldn't allow such things, but I say, it's important uh, to focus on the activities and they are done in the right order. That's why we have white spots. Um, these are a simplified view of dependencies uh, which can be across different subdimensions. So on in the build uh, subdimension, on level one, you have defined build process. And that is, for example, the base for all the different tests we do, because in case a build isn't defined, it's very hard uh, to perform static testing because you need to know where is the source code checked out during the build process so that you can define, please, uh, my static test will test these specific folder um, or is these specific artifacts, but therefore it needs to be defined where they are. Defined build process here means for example, that you have a code, it doesn't need to be documented uh, in, in, a, in a Word document or a wiki page. It just needs to be defined so that you can reproduce it. And mostly you will do this uh, in code in your build server, for example, in a Jenkins file, or uh, you can also do it, for example, in GitHub Actions or uh, and so on. Then on level two on the on the next that let us continue with level one on in the test and verification you have for example uh, the sub dimension static dev and in there uh, we have test of server-side components with known vulnerabilities when you're very precise this is a uh, software composition analysis uh, but as this doesn't make sense to put it in a in a in, a, in an own sub dimension it's here in static dev and um, this doesn't have more dependencies, but you can see that the static analysis for important server-side components here, that um, um, 
has on level four other uh, other things which depend on the static uh, analyzed ones for important server side components. So that can be, for example, a tool like uh, find security bugs. Um, um, and uh, first, you just analyze important components, maybe authorization components, and later all uh, self written components. And afterwards, maybe you do vendoring. That means that even the open source code you pull, uh, you want to perform static analysis. Um, this is uh, level four that is very, very high maturity. So here you can see that level four mostly is something which you're not targeting. Mostly you are targeting level one and level two, maybe some things from level C uh, and, and some activities from level four, but your main target should be to fill out level one and two. Um, yeah, when you are, in case you're a developer, you should, should start with your own team. And now, as I said, as this is uh, a showcase, let us take a look at the application here. So um, this is the application, um, which has a, a dimension and the subdimension, which I have presented beforehand, and the different uh, maturity levels. So you can, for example, take here a look at the dim dimension build and deployment then the build, and here we have the defined build process, which we have seen in the slide beforehand. You can hover and get to know um, um, a brief understanding, so it, it informs you about the risk when you not have a defined build process, and the opportunity, what do you gain when you have a defined build process. When we click on it, while we are in the metrics, we get even more information, like examples, how you can assess if you have this or not, for example, to show your build pipeline and um, exemplary a job, and then you know, okay, is this there or not? Um, then uh, another way is uh, that you uh, sh show that every team member has access to that uh, build server, uh, or and you can also provide evidence in a way that uh, failed jobs are fixed. Depending on your scope, you might do it for your own, for your team, then you don't uh, need to uh, be so precise. This is just helpful in case you do it uh, to document your security maturity um, for someone else. Um, then it might make sense to fully cover these assessment questions and document it. In addition, we get implementation hints uh, because this is a very, uh, yeah, this is an abstract, an, an abstract uh, information here, which doesn't go into much detail. Sometimes it helps to get tool examples like you can see down here. Uh, so you have an example uh, and here, uh, this are mainly um, hints for, for, for uh, documentation uh, hints, uh, not tools in this case, um, but uh, I, I think you understand that the tool is often helpful uh, when 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 you when you don't understand the description. In addition, we get uh, yeah some some metrics about this activity. So is it is it a high value, a medium level a value, or a low value, or even a very high value or very low value? Uh, how much knowledge do you need to implement this? How much is the required time to do it? And what are the, the resources you need? In addition, you have a mapping to over SAM here, the over software issuance maturity model, and to the um, ISO, so that you can also map to the ISO uh, appendix dimension. Um, you can scroll through it and see all the different uh, subdimensions with the activities inside. And in the end, you get some statistics of how many activities are there, how many dimensions, how many subdimensions are there. Um, it doesn't make sense in this presentation to go through all the different uh, activities, but uh, we can we can go through some samples so that you get an understanding of what is required in different uh, subdimensions. So we talked already about build. Uh, in deployment, it's about the deployment process. So nowadays you define that, for example, in Argo CD or uh, other uh, tools. 
So that means define deployment process. Then we have patch management. You might utilize a tool like Depender Bot or Renovate to automate pull requests. So that is meant here. And by having this automated pull request, you should define a policy. How fast should these different open pull requests getting merged? Maybe you take in account, uh, take into account that there is a security flag or not, which highlights that there is a vulnerability which is getting fixed, and so on. Then in the design phase, we are talking mainly about threat modeling and how to evolve threat modeling in the education um, sub-dimension. Uh, it's about training and how you enhance the culture. Um, so it's, it's very important that there's not one architect in a, in a big organization. It should be in, in a way that the architect has different satellites in the team called security champions or security ambassadors. And that is what this educational guidance um, is about. Then we have process where it's about how you can yeah, shift to the right. Um, so what are the things, the activities you have to do on the right? Like you, you get an idea about how critical are the applications which you're having? What are the plans you are having in mind when uh, you're having prepared when, uh, for example, a, a system is not available? Then application hardening are uh, here. Yeah, I, I make my life very easy here. Uh, <laughs> Um, because uh, the DSIM reference is here over to, to other maturity models, which is um, the uh, application security verification standard and the mobile application security uh, verification standard. So when you want to uh, tick uh, the box here that you have these implemented, um, then you will need to follow these both standards. Then we come to development and source control, where it's about how do you use your version control system? And the first question here is, are you using a version control system? Uh, because that is not always there. Sometimes people uh, in, at a low maturity are working with folders to, to perform versioning. That is uh, not what I mean with versioning. So this is just something like it. All right, then uh, we come to infrastructure hardening. Um, so, for example, in these modern environments, every uh, every small system like a container might be able to talk with other containers uh, in the system or in the cluster, and that is something which we don't want. And this is called isolated networks for virtual environments, because uh, when, when you take a look at this model, it's not defined if you're using a cluster or if you're using um, playing Docker installation, or if you're using virtual machines. So that's why I try to abstract it a bit, but I try to be as close as possible at the doing. Then we come to logging. So in the logging, we it's, it's about how is there a centralized logging and um, is it visualized? Is it in, in time and so on? Then monitoring is about the um, the monitoring of your applications. But uh, as you know, when you're working with uh, AWS, for example, mostly it's recommended to also create metrics for budget. So when you're, you you estimate your budget for a month and when uh, you, you create a threshold and then you inform yourself uh, with alerts that you're over that budget, for example. So that is the, the first thing which is mostly recommended or that you have simple application and system metrics. Application uh, tests, these are tests which you create uh, with JUnit, for example, so unit tests, acceptance tests, and so on. But with a security focus, obviously. So when you are doing tests, uh, some people might uh, want to, to tick the box here and say, yeah, I have unit tests, but the question is, do you have it focused on security? For example, what are the, the first tests I would implement are uh, I would implement our um, tests for your authorization frameworks so that you test for this endpoint. I would like when this input happens that it's authorized and when this input happens that it's not authorized. So that are things uh, which you do in the application test. Then we have consolidation. That's very interesting here because we have a lot of different tests we can perform. And what you should uh, question yourself is how do you want to handle for its positive? How do you want to have the process when um, you are 
uh, have, want to accept a finding, for example, in known vulnerabilities, there might not be a patch, patch right now, but you expect it in five days. So how do you want to accept this so that it, you're not getting alerted again? So in, in, DevSec, in DevOps, we want to have everything automated. That means also the test cases are automated. Uh, and when you have more of these tests running, let's say every day, you don't want to get informed about the same vulnerability you took a look, uh, look at yesterday. So you need something to handle that. And here comes the question, do you want to handle it in the tool itself or uh, are you already planning to have multiple tools? Then it's highly recommended uh, to jump directly to level three and utilize the vulnerability management system. But when you know you only want to have one or two different test tools, then you might uh, just use the, 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 the capabilities of their tools. And then down here, we come to even more different tests uh, and that you have to adjust it based on the test intensity. Then we come to our implementation levels. Here you have the option to simply click on the activities to mark that you have implemented or to mark that you haven't implemented. So mostly you start with the right metrics and then you go through uh, these different dimensions, as I said, I recommend to go first through level one and two and don't take a look so much at level three. Um, because you will, I also I already identify some, uh, mostly you will identify some missing things. So it's recommended first fill out completely level one and then two. Sometimes you want to adjust the model because there are a lot of different tests here which you can perform. And for one customer, for example, we defined that we don't want to perform dynamic tests at all because they are very uh, expensive to implement. And um, that meant that we say, okay, this is not part of our DevSecOps maturity model in that organization, but all the other things we kept. So uh, that we just have, uh, what, what I do in that case is to mark this here as gray, for example, completely, I open GIMP and just uh, mark these fields uh, as gray um, and uh, these ones also, and then everyone knows, okay, we are not focusing on that. In addition, I might also go to level uh, four and level three and mark that also as gray as not planned right now because we want to focus on level two and level one. by creating uh, the model. When you want to adjust it, it's also important to take a, a, in mind the ease and the value of implementation. And then you can take a look here at the different sub-dimensions and take a look at the different activities in here. We also have uh, mappings, uh, mappings to uh, SAM and ISO, as I told you beforehand in one activity, but mostly when you want to have the mappings, you would like to see it all at once. So this is what this page here is for. You can say, okay, I would like to only show the performed activities. And then you get here uh, the mapping to these different, uh, to, to, to SAM and ISO for the activities you actually have implemented. The chief information security officer might be very in, uh, um, interested in these. In addition, uh, you can get a full uh, report. So all the different things which are described in the uh, in the activities are, are shown here. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so that you can kind of print it and give it to an auditor in case you want to. Uh, we have a page for the usage. So how do you use it? Actually, there is kind of a level a zero. Some free requirements are there. For example, that you uh, that the product owner. I do have the buy-in to do it, that the Apple management uh, also wants to create such a maturity model and stick to it and improve, continuously improve. Um, yeah, on, in addition to this talk uh, here today, you see that uh, in the readme of the project, there are a lot of different uh, links where, where there are different points of, different points are in the focus. Um, yeah, and the last thing I would like to tell you is where you can find the model. Uh, it's in uh, on GitHub and you can easily down, take a look uh, here in the GitHub repository. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe maybe one last word uh, for the conclusion. So it's very important that you start, just start with your area of influence and uh, go through the model, click the boxes where you, the activities where you think you have implemented it um, and then plan your next step. For example, for the next three months, what do you want to implement in the next three months? Don't uh, take too much, just one activity that will be enough for three months. Thank you. Thank you very much, Timo. It was perfect. It was very interesting and a lot of information in just 25 minutes. Uh, thank you. So the first question that I have is it, it is obvious that there is uh, an overlap with OWASP sum in certain areas. Are you actively trying to align or differenti differentiate content with the sum? Focusing on technical aspects of DevSecOps instead of mixing application security aspects might be a good complementary way forward. Uh, so, so, so the first question was related to what is the difference between SAM and DSAM, right? And the overlap. Yeah, so, yeah, overlap are you are you overlap. actively trying to align or differentiate content with the SAM? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you as you have seen in the in the mappings, I try to map the different activities to SAM, um, and that means when you perform a SAM assessment you get a very broad description of what you have to implement. For example, in, in when, you, when you go to SAM, they say, please do dynamic application security testing, but they don't tell you exactly how you can do it, how you can evolve, and that is what you can see here. So in the first step, you just perform a simple scan to get to know these dynamic testing tools, and then you enhance the coverage and um, um, maybe the intensity of the tool, so you, you get to improve. Um, so that is, I would say, the difference. You you get here a more fine granular view. That means it also takes more time to perform the assessment in, one to, in case you want to go through level one to level four. But as I said, it's easy to just do level one and two first, and then later you think about level three and four. Um, I would say also the focus is different. Uh, why you, you, I would perform a SAM assessment to, to convince management. I would perform a, a, a decent assessment when it's more related to technical, uh, to, to the technical people who also want to implement it afterwards, because then you can more fine, find more fine granularly use it. Also, you could create a base model with decent, which will be hard with, uh, with, with SAM itself. Very good. Thank you very much. Great answer. And another question. Uh, I've heard uh, DSOM uh, participate in the Google uh, Summer of Code. Uh, what the student is doing there? Uh, yeah, we have a student, uh, Ayan Prasad. Uh, he is redeveloping uh, this whole application. This is a bit old school, right? I developed it during my master's thesis. Uh, it's written in PHP completely. Uh, now we will get uh, an Angular application. He will create an Angular application for it. So in case you use this, uh, this uh, UI and identify uh, um, features you would like to have, now is the right time to create an issue so that uh, we can we can think about if we want to put it in the backlog. Sounds great. Uh, that's that's perfect. Uh, so I hope people uh, can also contact you and ask more questions if it's uh, if there is any relevant questions uh, about the topics that you shared. Right, it's, you are open to uh, to other more questions after presentation. Is it fine? Sure. Yeah, great. Thank you, Timo. It was very good, very interesting, and we had questions. And uh, thank you for participation and being a great speaker. And uh, thank you for your questions. And that's uh, finishing our today presentation. Uh, please uh, check agenda and move to the uh, any other presentation you are interested in. But now we are moving to lunch expo.